Hello, everybody. This is Hall Washington. This is on part three of the rent series entitled Communication. Um, last time, uh, and I, was, I left out talking about um, the obstacles that prevent some good communication. The first two obstacles, obstacles that I was talking about was on pride, and I was talking about selfishness and talk about selfishness, selfishness as well. I want to go more to detail about uh, selfishness um, today, and uh, I want to uh, introduce some more um, uh, obstacles uh, that prevents good communication as well. Uh, going more deeper into um, selfishness and stuff, right? Last time I was telling you that uh, a selfish person, uh, what they do, they, they, um, they, they, they keep for saying... Um, they they are um, the person who's communicating point of view in other words so so in other words they are uh, <coughs> they they more want concerned about how the way they feel they're only concerned about they their self and not they're not concerned about um nobody else and so therefore it makes them very very hard and make them very difficult to receive constructive criticism and to a to uh to receive constructive criticism to to receive good advice and also to you know accept and understand Basically, how people, how the person who's communicating, so you feel and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, see, a selfish person, they they have this real, real vague idea that, um, real vague idea that the world is centered centers around them. That the whole world is just about them and nobody else. You know what I'm saying? That if you're not part of their universe, then the you know the hell with you. You know what I'm saying? That's how the way a selfish person mentally thinks and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, they're not they're not willing to want uh, conform. Um, they they will they they're not willing to conform. Uh, in other words, uh, I know this term conform. Uh, many people uh, who probably viewing this rant and stuff, they hear the word conform, and immediately they start talking, thinking about the Bible and stuff like that. But in this sense, um. I'm using the word conform basically into adapting into um, the, the other person's understanding. You know what I'm saying? I'm not using the word conform, you know what I'm saying, in biblical sense, like, you know, uh, do not be conformed to the world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Wish that scripture could go into communication, but we're not talking about that right now. Um, but I'm talking about conform as basically having the understanding or to adapt to um, the, the understanding of how the way this person is feeling about you or about the situation, you know what I'm saying? So they're not willing to conform in that uh, in that nature, in that sense, you know what I'm saying? So, so uh, you you have to um not be that selfish person who's living inside this this bubble that everything evolves around you. So wherever you say it, it goes and stuff. No, that is not communication. That's being selfish and that's being profitable. And you cannot be that in communication. Now, another one, another obstacle that, that will prevent good communication is rejection. The fear of rejection. Now, this right here is another key ingredient to um, um, dis disregarding effective communication. The reason why is because many people out here, you know what I'm saying, including uh, myself at one time or another, we have this fear of rejection. We, we have this fear that um, that if I say something, then this person is going to immediately disprove what I say. You know what I'm saying? Or if I say something, or it's going to be if I say something, then there's going to be a consequence behind what I say. And all I'm doing is expressing my feeling, how do I feel and stuff, you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying, I feel that, you know, there's going to be a consequence behind it and stuff, you know what I'm saying? And there are a lot of, um, and there are a lot of reasons why, um, why people feel, why people want to get to this point. I can tell you personally, from my, pers from my personal point of view, the reason why I've, uh, I've, I have the fear of rejection is basically because, uh, truthfully, it's because of the way I was brought up. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, It'd it be some some cases where, uh, as a child, you know what I'm saying, I want to express myself, but I just don't know how to do it. And so I express it in a weird way. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I express myself by um, getting into trouble or, you know what I'm saying, being, being, you know what I'm saying, disrespectful or disobedient to my parents, but it was just a way that I was just expressing myself, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't, I, I had a conscious understanding of right and wrong, that it was right and wrong, but I just did because I just wanted to express myself, and I didn't know how to express myself, and in my mindset, I was like, hey, 
uh, I'm already going to get in trouble anyway, so I might as well express myself this way so I could get that attention that I want. You know what I'm saying? So basically, in that same understanding about rejection and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Um, rejection is basically it's the assurance of uh, the assurance of acceptance removes heat from a potential difficult situation. In other words, while the fear of um, rejection is like, um, in other words, it's like pouring gasoline on the fire. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? The fear of rejection, that's what it is. It's like pouring gasoline on fire. It doesn't um, help the situation. It doesn't make it worse. You know what I'm saying? So the same example I was using as me as a child, uh, by me doing these things, it didn't help the situation. It just made it worse than what it was and stuff. But at the same time, it was just me trying to express how I feel. You know what I'm saying? I was just trying to express how I feel. But in my mind, I was thinking, hey, you know, just, it's going to happen anyway, so I may as well do it this way and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, another one, another one obstacle that, that hinders effective communication is unresolved past experience. This is a big one, especially with people who've been, especially with people who are who been in relationships that left a whole whole lot of baggage and stuff. The baggage relationships, you know what I'm saying? We, you you know the, the relationships that you want to be in and stuff, and baggage relationships and stuff. Y'all know how it is. Uh, let, let's throw it out there. Uh, so. Like, uh, you know, it could be anything. Like, say, for example, um, a woman um, who dealt with a, um, a boyfriend or you probably was married or prison married or whatever, you dealt with a boyfriend or husband who's abusive to you. So, therefore, you know, bring the same type of baggage to your new relationship. So, what you do, you know, um, put, in, uh, put it in the uh, a condition. So, remember one. Um, uh, I know if uh, many of y'all been following me on my rant system, but remember a long time ago, I was telling y'all about uh, contracts and stuff like that, having a having a contract relationship, stuff like that, putting uh, conditions into a relationship and stuff. This is what I'm talking about also in communication and stuff is that you bring this baggage into the relationship and then you, you put a demand on the person. <coughs> you, you put a put a warm. Um, unreachable demand to this person and stuff for saying like hey I'd be in an abusive relationship so you you're not to treat me this way if you treat me this way then this and that is going to happen you know what I'm saying and you immediately express that and stuff you know what I'm saying and you know and probably in your mind it was good it's it that you're expressing that way but also at the same time you have to understand that the person that you deal with now is not the person that you dealt with in the past. That's a totally different person that you dealt with in the past. And so you have to let that go. So unresolved past experiences is basically lingering, lingering communication from unresolved past issue that could that could uh, greatly uh, that greatly uh, affects your present communication. You know what I'm saying? So, if you let this thing linger, you know, about whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, it could be anything. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, say, for example, um, let's let's talk about, um, since this rant talking about, you know, mainly relationships. Let, let's talk about this. Let's say, for example, um, um, your, um, your, 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 um, your husband, uh, your husband just decided to, um, he, he decided to just, do a a purchase in other words. Yeah. He decided to uh, buy a boat. Let's let's be let's let's be spontaneous. He did decide to do something real spontaneous with his um, retirement fund, which is to buy him a boat. Now, you know that as a wife, you know that hey, we got all these other bills that we need to take care of. We could use these bills to get debt free then if we we've been debt free then eventually we could have worked towards getting your boat. He said, Nah, I'll give me a boat anyway and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So the the wife she okay he done did it and stuff like that she feels helpless she feel that it ain't no, nothing else that she can really do about because he done did it but at the same time she had some uh, unresolved feeling about it because it wasn't resolved at all she just went along with the flow she just went with it you know what I'm saying so here it is weeks later. Months later, the dude, he done got his boat, he chilling and stuff like that. And that's how you know, y'all on the family trip on the boat, by the way, and stuff. And, you know, he, um, you know, he's enjoying going out to the lake and you with him at the lake. 
uh, on the boat and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, the boat just break down, just break down or whatever. He's upset that uh, the boat wasn't a good purchase and stuff like that. And here, and here you go. Oh, you should well. That's what I'm talking about. I never felt that you should have bought the boat in the first place. The point that I'm making is that this issue should have been addressed right then and there. Your your concerns about the purchase of the boat should have been dealt with right then and there. You know, it should, it should have been communication right then and there instead of let it be unresolved. They try to wait into a situation to um um to bring it up as a way to attack how the way you feel or attack that person how the way you feel. And no, that ain't what you do with stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's a unresolved past experience that's an unresolved situation and stuff like that you know what i'm saying even um even does like say in the past you know dealing with just like i used to talk about abuse and stuff you know what i'm saying that's an unresolved issue that need to be uh expressed and it need to be communicated effectively you know what i'm saying where it will heal not only you but it'll heal the person that you communicated as well and it'll give them an understanding as well so how the way they could treat the situation when you leave it unresolved, you 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 put a handcuff on a person where they don't have nothing to do. They can't do nothing about it. You know what I'm saying? Because they ain't going to know. You know what I'm saying? Because you didn't communicate it to them and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, so another one, another obstacle that, that we do with the communication is um, a denying conflict. Um, and a denying conflict, um, it kind of, it deals with, you know, um, a conflict that's um you know dealing with you know anger and morally that's something that's morally wrong and um and you and it you just discourage these emotions even if um even if it's like anger and conflict involved in it in other words you know what I'm saying just like I was saying earlier about the unresolved past suspense stuff so in other words and stuff you just let it go but it's still there so you know what I'm saying do you feel like well, I don't want to hurt their feelings, so I'm just not going to say nothing, you know. No, that's not good communication at all and stuff. You have to let that person know how the way you feel. Effectively, by the way, as I keep emphasizing effective communication and stuff, you know what I'm saying, you, uh, which just goes back to what I'm talking about leveling and stuff, you know what I'm saying, you have to master how the way to talk to somebody in a way where you're not attacking them, you know what I'm saying, but you actually expressing how the way you feel without attacking, without belittling, belittling them, making them feel like they're less than a person, or you feel like that you're right and they're wrong and stuff, you know, that type of thing and stuff. So my time is up on, on this particular one topic, fight faith for faith. God bless.